Got to get ready. Super late for this one, too. Decided to make this three months ago. To myself. Oh, hey. Glad we happened to bump into each other here. Almost didn't see you there. Already hitting that subscribe button and giving this video a like. You may be seeing the die on my ear right now, but don't mind that. Or me here while you're doing that. I'm just moving this intro screen over for you so we can get this video started. With a newish Nintendo Direct showing off some high quality animations for a few of these new Gigantamax Pokemon coming to you in the expansion, it really reinvigorated the passion for how these forms of Pokemon look and really felt like an exciting time to go through these Pokemon and discuss how they look in the new games and rank them accordingly. We'll be going through each and every single one to see what comes out on top as the best new Gigantamax form there is in this video on all 7 new Gigantamax forms in the Pokemon Sword and Shield expansions. Let's get into it. It's not a beginning to a rank all these Pokemon video without another face off between two Pokemon fighting for the spot of at least not last. Today's competitors are Gigantamax Urshifu and Gigantamax Urshifu where one will be given last and the other second to last. But if you flip it around, they're really fighting for first and second to appear on this list. Making this number 7 versus number 6 face off versus a fight to behold. Real tough fight here actually because we really only have a small clip not showing them in battle and a bit of a shadowed image to keep things mysterious when you finally see them in game. We went over all the traits they already have in their original forms in the last video, so these categories of challenges will be focused only on what we can gather exclusively from their Gigantamax forms. They are both the only legendary Gigantamax Pokemon so far and dress themselves up quite nicely with some respective colors and changed up body patterns to not just be a bigger version of themselves, but have something to separate their original looks and their new forms. The blue one is the more fitting color of the two in regards to typing, with it being on the water fighting Urshifu, while red can have something to do with dark types, but might not be the most representative color in that regard, so Rapid Strike reigns a little supreme there. However, that vibrant red jumping out of the screen at you in this fierce form with single strike style yelling directly outwards drives a lot of emotion in this and is fitting for the red vs blue Gigantamax dynamic. The blue, however, does work well to calm everyone with its more focused and meditative look, luring you into a false sense of security and waiting to strike. Which brings us to the final cook-off of what we can judge with their poses. There's the fierce, angering, heated look, growling through the lands with light, brightening up its mouth, and even the more explosive looking kneecap. While the blue, patient fighter, posing with one leg up, has a more rounded kneecap to show its collective nature, as well as its well-rounded, experienced fighter look. But the one who climbs to the top between the two of these is... Single Strike Urshifu. While we can't see either in-game just yet, that blazing red really fits the glowing aura of Gigantamax Pokemon and that angering face shown close up and how it's yelling for a fight just feels like it might have some crazy destructive animations in battle. Rapid Strike here is very close. This collected bear might show off some real smooth moves in the game, but just based off what little we are given, Single Strike becomes double victory with that confidently raised fist to show appreciation for his win of number 6, but even though our blue friend lost out very minorly in this face off, Rapid Tears was an honorable opponent, and is in no way a bad design, so we'll give it number 6.5, with Single Section getting that number 6, and change this video to an all 6 new Gigantamax forms in Sword and Shield. Growing into number 5, we've got the myth, the legend, returning in from Generation 1, Gigantamax Venusaur. With how close these rankings for all the Gigantamax forms are, it was incredibly hard to choose them but just know any one of these Pokemon could have been number one. If I rearrange the order I already picked out. It was incredibly difficult with how close these starter Pokemon came off in comparison to each other. But you know, maybe poor Venusaur didn't ask for the bowl cut we all got when we were like eight. Gigantamax Venusaur has a lot going for it though, and has yet to be fully released and shown off. Just the fact that it's coming back gives it a lot of notoriety, and the focus on its petals might give it an incredibly appealing grass move, like a petal store or a Petal Waltz. You know, when I do see this, I feel like they had a Gigantamax Vileplume in mind when designing Venusaurs. That'd be one more Gen 1 Gigantamax Pokemon to add to the pack of 12. Venusaur even looks primed up for the Isle of Armor, and if only it could walk around and roam outside in its new Gigantamax form, it would be flourishing in the sun, 
taking in the beaches, and really bringing in a lot of appeal with its downright fitting look for this new area. Again, it'll be a lot of imagination going on for the Gigantamax forms that were shown in just still images that we have yet to see videos of or see them pop up in game. But even though Gigantamax Venusaur might seem low on this list, it's still in the top 5 and can go even higher up when we see more of it in game and would already roll through many lists over some of the previous G-Max Pokemon in Sword and Shield that are already available to be caught. The added top part of Venusaur does look like a crown and makes it feel very royal which is very fitting, and deserving for Venusaur well with all the flack it's taken since the Gen 1 starter trio came to be. It also looks a lot better than what's on Calyrex's head, and would have even been nice to see there too. Drumming into number 4 we have Rillaboom. Alright look, I know this is where things get controversial and the comments start to rile up, but these next 4 are all so close to one another. Let's just assess the reasons here first. We'll all gather together at the end to discuss things in the comments as these remaining four were the hardest to rank for sure. But when I say they're all close to one another, they are so close, this isn't even really a number four, this is a 1.4. As they're all contenders for their own personalized best design. Rillaboom's biggest strength in this is how big of a change it is from its regular form, while staying true to what its original form is designed around. Some Gigantamax Pokemon don't really change that much, but this isn't just a bigger version of its normal self, it's a gigantic half Rillaboom attached to an entire drum set for it to beat. That's not only a huge change to how it looks and what is in its Gigantamax design, but also one that is completely fitting and pulled off nicely for its consistent career as a drummer that swings in hard for its new Gigantamax move, G-Max Drum Solo. You can even tell it became a successful drummer because it grew out its hair and now has the luscious locks even Gigantamax Cinderace now has, which is Cinderace's biggest add-on to the rabbit part of its form. Let's just listen in and see how well Rillaboom's been practicing those drums for its new form. Astounding. Blasting into the third spot we have, Blastoise. This takes a lot of imagination without there being any in-game footage yet, but not only am I so happy to see Blastoise receive such a terrifying and overpowering look, the ideas and possibilities that stem from its core design just branch out into new territories of what could be. For its G-Max move, I'm imagining a rapid spin shell bash, but with every turret on its back shooting out hydro pumps, including the one under the smoke, shooting a typhoon of water. It also looks primed to have all those tiny double cannons come out as full-on moving cannon super soakers like some guy at the park who brought a fire hose to a water gun fight. This was almost one I picked for an even higher spot, but I didn't want to base it off just what could be. Although this ferocious looking turret turtle that outdoes Gigantamax Charizard and brings a lot more to Blastoise's look, even more than Mega Blastoise does, the middle Hydro Cannon is still pretty sick, is definitely deserving of at least the third spot on this list with the possibilities of what they could be doing with that upgraded shell. Kicking off this fight for first, in the second spot, we have Cinderace. It's been an all out brawl, but here we are in number 1.2 with the fiery rabbit standing upon a burning ball of happiness. If that face wasn't there it would have been number 4. But altogether these forms bring something great to each Pokemon. The long ears and more menacing look really makes it look like Cinderace grew up from the playful rabbit and is standing there with confidence and charisma of befriending a happy fireball to be kicked into gear and sent directly to your opponent. It has that terrifying fearing look that Gigantamax Lapras has with the silliness they were going for with Gigantamax Snorlax, all in two different sections of this form with the Bad Bunny and Pyro Puppy. Gigantamax Cinderace just manages to draw the fine line between keeping what already makes a Pokemon great, while adding enough changes in certain spots to make its form slightly different and enhance aspects of it for a great form, keeping that cartoon rabbit feel and giving it a new sidekick. Sniping that number one spot, we have Inteleon. I know it's always been a hyper competitive competition between Cinderace fans and Inteleon, well, defenders. Kind of hated on a lot to see where the fans actually are, but with this Gigantamax form, you really have to appreciate it for not only having all the great aspects we've mentioned in everybody else's sections, but with some added little benefits in a package from our secret agent friend. You know us Rillaboom fans are content with what we've got. Cinderace and Inteleon can fight it out. We got a big cool drum. We trade our legs for that set. That's now 90% of our body. That's a great change for a Gigantamax form. We're chill with top 5 in an all out brawl for first by basically 0.3 points. Even without the Pokemon gun memes, Inteleon's tail being an entire 130 foot sniper tower 
wrapping into a circle at the top where a platform for it to act out its role as an agent appears, and leaning down onto it to snipe out some opponents gave it so much more to its original form as it transforms with that animated tail having it reach the skies. Its G-Max move is the best looking one out of all three starters, and the humor of its form really makes you smile upon seeing it, even more so than the added little face on Cinderace's Pyro Ball, which is actually pretty hard to do with a face like that. Inteleon aims its sights onto first, and with its precision and expertise, locks onto the target and hits that bullseye. Complete.